Hi, my name's Phil. I like to come out politics. So there's been a lot of increased concern about the prospect of an AI bubble burst. The global economy has never really recovered from the banking crisis nearly two decades ago. And now we're also contending with Trump's global trade war, the increasing hit to trade of unchecked climate change and geopolitical instability around major trading centers as well. Oh, yes, and the United States is sliding into stupid evil-led totalitarianism. It's not helping. So all things considered, most people are in agreement that we could do without an AI bubble burst, which could lead to all manner of economic panic and pain. But why exactly are people worried about this potential bubble burst? And why do some experts think that the risk is being overblown? But first, for daily news and politics, please click the subscribe button to stay notified. So Bloomberg produced this handy little graphic to show the reason why people are concerned about a loss of confidence in the AI sector, which could lead to a bubble bursting and all the mess splattering over the rest of us, while the possibly feckless wealthy investors who caused it all hunker down with their gold shares. Well, it shows the financial interplay between different major companies within the AI industry. So let's just get rid of it for a moment and look at what exactly the AI industry is. So it contains three types of role, although some companies take more than one at a time. The most important are, of course, the AI service providers. These are the companies who produce the services which can produce chatbots, graphical tools, music generation tools of the sort I used recently, all of this sort of stuff. Now, this is very processor heavy, so you need data centers setting up, massive ones. So other companies exist to provide the physical computing power to run those AI services. Now, some companies have both the data centers and run the AI services, but for others, it's two separate entities. Then the third type of company involved are those supplying the chips for all of this to happen, advanced chipsets. And by far the biggest of the chipset manufacturers is NVIDIA because, well, those are the best. So let's go back to our little Bloomberg chart. Now, this shows you various companies who produce chips, run data centers, and run AI services. Now, what you can see is a whole load of colored arrows linking all of these companies up. Those arrows are capital flow, the movement of money. Now, think about this. If I say that the industry is composed essentially of AI service providers, data centers, and chipset manufacturers, this is how you'd imagine the flow of money would work. The AI companies build or contract data centers. So they pay the data center companies or they pay to have their own in-house, but they're paying money for data centers because they need them to run their development, but also their AI services off, right? Then those data center companies, well, they need to buy chips so they pay the chipset manufacturers like NVIDIA, that would be the flow of money. It would flow from the AI service providers to the data centers to the chipset manufacturers. That, that's how the flow of money would work, wouldn't it? But that's not what this graphic is showing. There's money flowing not just to NVIDIA, but from it as well. Not for the raw materials for the chips. Obviously, NVIDIA have costs. Yes, they have to pay money for, to be supplied with things. No, this isn't for supplying anything for them. It's nothing used in their development or manufacture. They're giving money to the data center and AI companies. And this is the first concern some experts have. What you have here is a situation whereby chip manufacturers are investing in data center and AI companies who use that investment to buy that company's chips. So there's like a couple of red flags. First of all, in practical terms, companies like NVIDIA are basically paying companies to buy their chips. A little bit like an author buying a thousand of their own books on publication day to boost the sales. But you haven't really boosted any sales. You haven't generated any wealth. The second issue is that this is like discounting the chips. So companies like NVIDIA, they appear to be selling their chips for a certain price, which you can use to calculate the revenue of the company and therefore its value to shareholders. But in practical terms, their revenue is actually less than it looks like because they're then giving money to the companies who are buying large quantities of these chips. And this sort of business model, by the way, completely blows away the arguments capitalists often make about rigor in the market. Many of these companies are getting guaranteed income from others. So there's less pressure on them to deliver efficiently or maybe even quickly. 
There will be a natural competitive spirit amongst the developers, of course there will, but no economic pressure to compete. This is not how a market is supposed to operate. Puts me in mind of what happened when, um, well, when you pretend that public services can operate like a competitive market, when there is no competition, that didn't work out too well in the UK, did it? However, this in itself does not cause the bubble to burst. The chips are increasing in price all the time, which means that there must be strong demand for the chips across all users. Remember, they're not only supplying chips to AI companies. But then we'll just move this graphic again and look at this from the AI services point of view. Because although the focus is on the chips here and companies like Nvidia, because they're driving much of the flow of money in the industry, the end product is the AI services, which is where the big risk is. AI services are not really in demand and they cannot operate on an economic basis. Companies providing AI services are making massive losses, absolutely huge losses. Why? Because not that many people really value the AI services as they currently exist. Most people buying these services are doing so to produce things for fun or maybe very low commercial returns. There are not many people powering their business through AI produced essays or pictures or music or the myriad of other things AI is being used for right now. This means that the price people are prepared to pay for the services is relatively low. From reports, it would seem that for these AI services to be economically viable, they would have to massively ramp up their prices, like maybe like a thousand percent. At that point, of course, yes, they'd still get customers among some governments and large businesses because they are getting value, but everyone else would just be priced out of the market or just decide it's not worth it, even if they can afford it. So the cost of using AI is actually artificially low, but the demand is also low. Now, nobody believes AI is a dead end. Even those thinking a crash is imminent have no doubt that AI is going to be a major, major feature of our lives in the long term. But right now, the people invested in it are doing so into an industry that is making massive losses. Those investors are hoping that there will be an inflection moment where AI delivers some services so life-changingly awesome that the demand suddenly surges and they want to have, have, have bought those shares when they were still relatively affordable, right? At this point, the industry becomes profitable. So basically, you're in a sort of race, which happens first. AI pushes through major developments which make their services basically compulsory to more, many more people's lives, so they have to buy them, meaning paying customers suddenly increase by that 1,000% or more. Or investors get cold feet and it dawns on them that they're throwing money into a leaky bucket, which shows no sign of having those leaks plugged up. An opinion appears to be divided from what I'm reading. You've got some economists who think the loss making at the AI service provider end doesn't matter because it's the chip makers driving the money in the industry and they're selling their chips for more and more. And just to be clear, Nvidia are making pots of money, by the way. Although there's a sense of artificially increasing sales and revenue by investing in companies who are going to then buy their chips, they are actually stunningly profitable. That means that they are selling their chips across the world for way more than they are spending on whatever, right? Including on investing in AI companies. So there are some people who say, look, there's no reason this can't be sustainable because the overall profits are real. But there are others who look at the flow of money and say, look, it's not sustainable for chip makers to be paying AI companies to buy their chips in order to provide services at a loss. This is going to go tits up very soon. They point out that the chips are not the AI industry. If the AI industry collapses, chip makers will still make chips. Not as many, because we still need them for other things. And there will still be some AI service providers left. You know, it would still continue and AI would continue to be developed that in NVIDIA's profits do not protect AI companies if the investors decide to pull out because it's taking too long to turn a profit. Now, investors do take a very long-term view of these things. They are prepared to throw money into a company that's making a loss for years and years if they think it is going to explode later on, right? But nothing's guaranteed. All it takes is for some investors to think that this miracle development isn't actually on track and there are better bets elsewhere, and they get cold feet, and your bubble bursts. And this has been discussed for a while now, but the likes of the Bank of England have just started talking about the prospect of this bubble burst. Now, 
if major central banks are now worried, not just random economic commentators, that suggests the balance of opinion has moved more towards the idea that maybe investing this silly money into companies who make massive losses isn't such a great move and that we're not close to that inflection point. Can tech bosses keep convincing investors that the next big thing is just around the corner? You know, exactly in the same way that Musk pulls in um, Tesla investors by telling them he's going to go to Mars any day now. But let me know what you think in the comments below. For more content, you could subscribe to the channel or even join for access to streams and behind the scenes updates. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.